Hello, welcome to another Tweedy Outdoors video. This is going to be just an afternoon stroll, not even cooking lunch today out in the wild because I had a sandwich on the train on the way here. I'm eating a sandwich on a train. I'm down in Kent uh, just for the afternoon, just for a couple of hours because I wanted to see an antiquity I've known about for some time but have never actually managed to visit. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to come see it. But uh, this is Kitts Coty, which is a part of the, the, the Medway Megaliths uh, series of Neolithic stone monuments. And Kitts Coty is perhaps the most, well, possibly the most famous of them of this particular group. And here it is. Not a huge amount of ceremony made about it. Possibly I've approached from the wrong path. Perhaps I was supposed to come through there. Kitts Coty is a dolmen from about 4000 BC. So this is a good 6000 years old. And I was researching the difference between a dolmen and a long barrow recently when I was in Dorset. A dolmen is a structure that would have been a single chamber within a long barrow so this particular site probably would have been covered over by an earthen mound this wouldn't have been visible externally in its original state but this would have represented the most significant chamber of that long barrow here's a sign from English heritage with a bit of interpretation. Probably a burial site. Long barrows are typically used to bury multiple members of the uh, of a clan. The Medway megaliths, this set of megaliths, there are two or three just within walking distance. So we're going to see after Kitts Coty here, we'll see little Kitts Coty, though it's not as intact. They have apparently some distinguishing features in this cluster that are quite uh, notable and similar to each other and different from other dolmen structures and long barrows and particularly one of the things is the height it's probably difficult to get a sense of that on the video but this is taller than is typical for a dolmen in southern England in the region of 10 feet Kitts Coty the name possibly derives from Brythonic ancient British, that sort of Welsh language of ancient Britain, and possibly means the tomb in the forest, although I don't know if there are any guarantees of accuracy with a, a name of, of that sort of age. Of course all the usual familiar faces, names of antiquarians, William Stukeley and co, they've all been here at some point or other. Interestingly Samuel Pepys visited here, he wrote in his diary Three great stones standing upright and a great round one lying on them of great bigness. It's not your finest literary hour there, Samuel Pepys. Although not so big as those on Salisbury Plain, he's of course talking about Stonehenge, but certainly it is a thing of great antiquity and I am mightily glad to see it. Well, I agree, Samuel Pepys, with that sentiment. I think this is probably the entrance you're supposed to take to get to the site. It's just off the North Downs Way and really sort of blink and you'd miss it. There's no sign on the, the track back there that I can see. And uh, that's how it emerges from the other side of the bush. Well, some other people showed up at the, the main site there, little, uh, at Kitts Coty, and I didn't want to ruin their experience of that special site by uh, babbling on the boring middle-aged man talking about history and uh, dolmens. Uh, so instead, let's uh, let's head on and go and take a look at Little Kit's Coty. I believe that's just a pile of rocks, um, but uh, let's see what there is to see there. It's interesting to see these kind of monuments from the Neolithic, that pivotal period where the Britons moved from hunter-gathering to farming to agriculture, particularly in the context of Kent, which is of course a uh, the Garden of England, uh, a county very well known for its agriculture, its, its fruit, apples. Later on, hopefully, we might see a vineyard. I'm not really sure how to get to Little Kids Coty because there doesn't seem to be a footpath going already there, and there's just this rather busy road which I'd rather not walk along. 
Hmm. And over there, a quick glimpse of it through this rather officious looking fence is Kit's Coty Vineyard. Hopefully we'll get a better view of that somewhere or other. Again, very inconspicuous little gap in the uh, the bushes off the road there with no real walkway on it anyway. Um, the entrance to Little Kit's Coty, which as I say is uh, no longer stood up, presumably would have been a, a dolmen of a similar sort of construction to its sibling up the hill. Sometimes referred to as the Countless Stones, which seems to be a, an endearing, endearing? <laughs> I don't know if it's endearing, enduring is what I'm trying to say, an enduring myth about megalithic structures that are, uh, yeah, I've seen this on Dartmoor stone circles where it is apparently impossible to count them. And I suppose in this case it's because they're uh, rather a jumbled mess. Similar age, I believe. Uh, a bit harder to sort of piece that together mentally. We can see uh, some larger rocks here. Perhaps this could have been a capstone, slightly flatter. And this rather grand sarsen over here, more likely, I would guess, a side wall, the dolmen chamber. Assuming this was a dolmen chamber. With a couple of other smaller rocks around which may have been supports. Feels like there are more sarsens there, more megaliths than you would require to make a single dolmen. Rather nice William Stukeley drawing there on the information board from 1722. William Stukeley's view of it looks rather nicer than it does today with this bland swathe of agriculture and of course the pylons, the din of cars in the background, these metal fences, but uh, you know, easy to stand here and gripe, at least, at least the stone's still there, albeit not standing up. It makes me wonder why, why does agriculture uh, and this kind of monumental architecture, the, the long barrows and the dolmens, and then later the stone circles, why do those things go hand in hand? And if indeed these structures were about ancestor worship. It seems there is less evidence, at least archaeologically, and what other kind of evidence would there be really for that period of history, less evidence that ancestor worship was uh, a part of the culture prior to the, the Neolithic and the establishment of agriculture in the British Isles. So why, why, why should those two things go hand in hand? Is it something to do with agriculture means that there is a greater of knowledge that needs to be passed from one generation to the next whereas hunter-gathering was a bit more sort of primitive and instinctive and somehow therefore you know the veneration of the ancestors could be a, an offshoot of, uh, of that process of knowledge about agriculture being handed down from one generation to the next but you know that said surely the hunter-gatherers would have need, needed to have known how to hunt and how to gather, what was poisonous, what was not, which kind of wild animals make for good eating, which less so. Who knows? Back to Kit's Coty Vineyard, which is of course just in between the two megalith structures. There's uh, just up on the uh, hill amongst those trees is the main Kit's Coty site. And uh, over to the right over here, just across the road from that warehouse is Little Kits Coty. Uh, can't get any closer than this. There's uh, a fence, but this is the least, least officious of the fences seen so far. Kits Coty is owned, I believe, by Chapel Down, or at least they produce a wine of that name. In fact, a series of wines. And a few years back, the Prestige Cuvée, uh, an English sparkling, I believe it was a Blanc de Blanc, purely Chardonnay, was one of the first to break the hundred pounds barrier for English sparkling wines, which was a sort of bold statement of the uh, the level of confidence of the industry, and whether or not it's worth, whether or not any bottle of wine is worth a hundred pounds is uh, I'll leave as an exercise to the reader, the viewer. I have tried it. Um, I'm 
to be honest, not the biggest fan of Chapel Down in general. I find um, sort of lacks depth generally, but the, the the very expensive one from this vineyard here, the Kitts Coty Cœur de Cuvée Blanc de Blanc, is the, the heart of the winemakers. I think they made several wines here and they picked the very best um, samples or parcels uh, of the land that produce what they consider to be the best quality grapes and they put them into a special cuvee charged an absolute packet for it uh, more credit to them and it was a very intense uh, sort of baked apple apple pie very sort of intensely uh, uh, you know, acidic but also sweet uh, with some quite complex sort of pastry notes so I think it was actually a great wine I'm, the only wine from Chapel Down I can ever say hand on my heart I really enjoyed but um, you know a hundred pounds a bottle <laughs> kind of but I hope you're gonna enjoy it notwithstanding the unpleasantness of getting down that busy road to get here what a fantastic sight for someone like me we've got a, a prestige English sparkling wine vineyard there and just across the road we can't quite see it now is uh, a pile of stones a megalith so if you're into ancient history and English sparkling wine then um, you know you get big bang for your buck here it, 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 in reality it's pretty much just me isn't it the the set of people who are interested in English sparkling wine and the Neolithic and its ancient monuments that that's just me isn't it crackling street a very appropriate lane for me to be walking down I'm hoping we can get to one last megalith on this little outing as well look at that what a beauty a little sarsen stone there presumably just to block the path so that vehicles don't go down it how's that i've got the uh, gopro balanced very precariously on a concrete post over there because if i hold it you wouldn't be able to appreciate the full effect of me sitting on this lovely old sarsen stone <laughs> told you it was precarious. Sorry if this footage is a bit grainy. Nice hedge-lined path. And this is certainly a very pleasant stretch. It's almost tunnel-like. The, uh, there's a definite dip, sort of ditch, in the, the track. Presumably just where it's been worn away over the years. And then the hedges either side curling over create quite a sort of circular effect off in the distance, as you can see. And this is definitely very combination of this and the slightly blustery weather the fluffy clouds again we're uh, in a very Miyazaki like situation you can just about imagine the cat bus hurtling down here quite literally a tunnel now this is slightly weird oddly reminds me of the old Battlestar Galactica didn't the little ships that Starbucks was it what was it called Starbucks no, Starbuck singular, Starbuck and Apollo flew these little slightly sort of triangular, if you looked at them head on, ships. And they launched out of a tunnel a bit like this. Here we go. Here is the White Horse Stone. Just a single standing stone. It is about the same height as me, perhaps a tiny bit taller. So that's what, one meter 70 or so. And that is rather nice, I think, just here. Minding its own business. The edge of a field. Somebody seems to have decided to shove a bit of a burnt log into one of the crevices there. It's a bit disrespectful, I think, for something that quite possibly has been here 6,000 years. Seems to me as good a spot as any to uh, open a bottle of wine. For a change, a still English wine. I hope that's not disrespectful. Found a, a nice nook to balance the bottle in there. I should probably regurgitate some factoids from Wikipedia about the White Horse Stone possibly would have been part of a long barrow originally and there were a pair of these I'm not quite sure of the location of the other it wasn't immediately adjacent but I think somewhere else on this slope because this is the upper white horse stone 
there was apparently a lower white horse stone possibly down towards the i don't know if you can see where the train tracks are at the bottom of the field there and that's no longer there that was uh, destroyed in the 1800s apparently or, or removed so there's no proof but this could have formed part of a long barrow not necessarily a dolmen i think barrows long barrows could contain other stone material that wasn't arranged in a, a dolmen like structure because there, there's no evidence of uh, if this were for example a capstone then i don't think there's any remnant of any of the supporting stones for the walls uh nearby there's a couple of tiny sarsens down there but they don't look they're of much consequence so could have been a single wall of a dolmen could have been some other structural element of a long barrow or could have served some other purpose altogether we don't really know rather a nice site though I, I like the uh, the steps leading up from the North Downs way there I think I'm changing my mind about the North Downs way I feel I was slightly unfair to it before and had I walked along here at some point and encountered three megalithic structures in this I mean it's a shame about the litter there but had I been walking along the North Downs way and encountered this completely by surprise if I had not researched it I would think it's rather magical I mean I do think it's rather magical as it is even though I knew it was here just me megalith back there and a uh, glass of the local wine this is absolutely idyllic White Horse Stone, Gazborn's Pinot Noir 2018. Beautiful spot. I felt like I was hogging it to myself a bit and uh, a couple just stopped by, paused at the entrance and then moved on. I think they probably would have uh, hoped to have had some peace and quiet there without having to share it with a weird guy in a tweed suit. So uh, time to move on, although I'm not actually sure what I'm doing next, uh, I think basically I need to get back to Chatham now. That's everything I wanted to come and see. It's quite a long walk from here to Chatham Station. It's a good hour and a half, which you know I normally wouldn't mind if uh, it was all pleasant countryside between here and there, but it's basically all of the outskirts and the sprawl of Chatham to get through, which doesn't sound that appealing. Um, I don't know. I'll start walking in that direction and just see what happens. As I said, I don't really know where I'm going now, but this is a very pleasant bit of woodland to walk through. It's heading vaguely back in the direction of Chatham. And I suppose I'm now, this kind of country lane here, I suppose is now the very outskirts of Chatham. It's a big old sprawling town is Chatham and a sort of pretty long walk from here to the station which is right the opposite side. Google Maps tells me if I walk down this uh, fairly pleasant urban path, it seems to be going along the backs of houses and a little green strip of land between the development then, uh, of any houses. And I'll get to somewhere with a bus stop and apparently there are buses running this time on a Sunday afternoon so let's try that. You really don't need these updates, do you? You're only here for the megaliths and the wine and that's already passed. I think rumours of the existence of that bus were greatly exaggerated, so I ended up getting a taxi back to Chatham Station. I could have just walked the, uh, I think by the time I'd stopped walking, I had another just under an hour to go, but um, walking through towns, so there's not much joy in that really, it's particularly sort of large sprawling housing estates as I was walking through, so uh, happy that I ended it where I did. I'm at Elephant and Castle, uh, I don't know if you can read the sign over there. Bit of an incongruous end to the video but I didn't quite have time to do a, uh, a wrap up at where were we Chatham um, coming back by a circuitous route but anyway you don't care about that uh, I hope that's been of some interest it was a nice mixture of two things I like wine and ancient monuments uh, wine and megaliths <laughs> as I said earlier probably it's only me that actually is really into both of those things um, English wine and ancient megaliths but uh, anyway uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope some of that was enjoyable and I'll see you on the next one.